Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to uh, Dave's Pet Show. So we got snowed out a couple of uh, weeks. That's why you saw reruns, because John, the cameraman, was, was too much of a wimp to come mm-hmm. over and actually film us. We were here waiting for him, mm-hmm. but no, he wasn't mm-hmm. here. Nope. So anyway, dug our way through and everything. In the Got meantime, mm-hmm. uh, Matt's all excited because it is Coming almost. In, almost. Almost. By the season. time you watch this, it'll hopefully be 70 degrees and warm outside. Yeah. It's time for pond. Happening. Yeah, not yet, but we'll right. see. But, or digging out another storm. But anyway. Right. We are coming into pond season, and what a better way to start off with is just saying hello to some of our fish friends here, some of our beautiful koi. We'll get them coming up here. Is that like the biggest one we've ever had? That's one of the biggest. That one there is about 26 inches long and weighs about three pounds. And believe it or not, it's not that old. They grow quickly. This particular one here is three years old. Have we had them for three years? We've had them about a year. Yep. Um, mainly for display. If somebody yep. wants to right, buy right, him, right. he's up for grabs. But he's pretty much a display What's it, fish. Like hundred dollars a pound or something. Pretty much, yeah. To put it, to put it, put it nicely. He, that's about his price right there. Um, but three hundred bucks. Three hundred bucks. Three hundred bucks. He can be yours. But these guys grow really, really, really. He'll get quickly. even bigger. Oh yeah, he can get up to about three. Six feet. Three feet. We'll go about three feet. But six feet is a big koi. But yeah, three feet still a pretty good sized koi. Um, and he's a koi because he has whiskers. He has whiskers. He has whiskers, and he also has the modeled, see the nice modeled pattern on him? Yeah. He's got the nice displaced markings. Beautiful, beautiful color. They're very yeah. friendly fish, too. But people can buy these when they're small, and they, as you can see, this one's for only like three six years or old. For seven dollars? Yeah, for six or seven dollars, and grow him up to that size within, within two years. Um, they can stay outside in the pond year round yep. as long as you have at least three feet under you and your top doesn't freeze over. Keep a uh, hole open in the ice. But anyway, we're about in these spring. Guys? How about these? How about this? That's a rubber ducky. Oh, oh that right there. I um, thought maybe that was. Yeah, that's their toy. Actually, they do like to play around with them, so it gives them a little something to do, just like birds. They like to entertain Look, themselves. They yeah, 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 yeah. See, they're pushing them around and having fun playing a little soccer game. Um, there's all different types of koi and goldfish in here. You can see here's the traditional goldfish. This Which one? They move too fast. Yep. Sword, see this the bright orange, orange one? one? Yep. yep. That's just a traditional goldfish that's growing out to a good size. But he'll, he can get. He can get up to 16 inches, 16 to 18 inches. And, and, and how much is he? He's a couple dollars, right? He's Would inexpensive. You yep. You can buy goldfish. We have three inch goldfish for 99 cents that you can start your pond with. Yep. Um, we. We also have. They come in different colors as well. See this one here is a pure white one. This is a goldfish as well. Which this one? Little, this guy? See this guy right here? Yes. He's actually pinkish yeah, 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 yeah. with a yellow pinkish. head. But yep, pinkish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's actually a common goldfish as well. So they do also come in really pretty colors as well. Now, going on to starting your pond. Yes, this I'll is gonna be the holder. You, this is you, gonna be the time of year where a couple yes. things. Your fish are gonna start to come to life again as the water warms up. But remember, they're still water is still pretty cool and it takes a long time for their metabolism. their metabolism to speed up. So as the fish start becoming more active, you can feed them the spring and fall food. That's food that's much easier to digest, um, gets them started, gets them feeding again. As the temperature warms up, you get into the summer months, then you can start feeding them the staple so, food. So well, I want to go back to this. There is a difference between se- seasonal <coughs> food with goldfish. Correct. So that's yes. really important. Yes. Yes. Much easier to digest, uh, a little bit lighter on their system. It goes through them quicker, yep. <coughs> gets their system going again. OK. And, and what then, is this? And that is barley liquid. What this does, it actually is a liquid form of barley straw. As this decomposes, it creates an enzyme. Excuse me. <coughs> Pardon me. This creates an enzyme which competes with the waste. You have the a frog in waste. your throat? I swallowed a frog. This actually competes with the waste, the food source, so it actually helps break down, keep your water clear. You want a drink? <clears throat> oh, yeah, that'd be great. Sorry, folks, lost my voice. As that, that frog in the season. Cat got your tongue? Cat got my tongue. Anyway, this is liquid form. If you have a really, really, really hazy, so they, cloudy. So they squeeze that? They actually decompose this and liquefy it. And then if you have a really, really, really nasty, cloudy pond that's been spilled with sediment over the winter, yeah. you can add that. That'll actually help break down the waste in the water. It creates an enzyme. Seriously. Which competes with the food, which competes with the food source for the algae. So it'll start clearing your water immediately. And then do you have to like all kidding? Do you scoop it out after? Well, it's how, good it to work? pull out like any an of the oil. Yeah, slip? any of the leftover waste, like dead leaves yeah. and stuff, pull out. But this is the fine mite. Like the if the water starts getting like green or really gray on you, yeah, that's caused. That's a form of algae 
that's living off of waste, liquefied waste. Yeah. This creates an enzyme that sucks that all actually that. competes with the food source for that and kills all the bad so, stuff. And so, seriously, how does how does this get back out of the pond? Do you scoop it out, or is it this just here? Yeah, the, it's just it's a liquefied. Just gets yeah, liquefied. it just yeah, okay. just liquefied. That is okay. a quick form. Through right. the summer, a lot of people just throw bale, bales of barley in there as they decompose. It's a, cons a consistent source of keeping the water clear. Just let it circulate in a, um, in a, a heavy current area. Yep. That'll actually help keep it through the whole summer nice and clear. Do you have a UV sterilizer in here? There is a UV sterilizer on that system, yes. Why don't we, why don't we discuss said thing? Yes, said thing, UV sterilizer. It's a wonderful, wonderful tool that'll always, always, always give you clear water. You won't have any algae at all even in direct sunlight. What it is, it is a UV light bulb that sits inside a filter or a sterilizer. As the water passes through the light bulb or over the light bulb, it is actually sterilized. The UV lights actually kill the algae, the free swimming yep. algae, and it actually clarifies the water. It also can knock down small parasites too. So if you have a lot of fish in there, I would highly recommend putting a UV sterilizer on because that'll actually help Keep parasites. Yeah, and then you designs. don't have to you don't have to put in tons of chemicals. Right, and all you're that not kind doing any chemicals or anything. Right. I, a lot of people will put algicides in there, which you have to be very careful with. Um, this is all natural. Algicides are almost like a chemical. like a pesticide, a chemical. And if you overdose on it, it's going to create such a kill off of the algae. It depletes the oxygen out of the water, which can be dangerous for these guys. That's why so a lot of people have overdose. Been, so UV sterilizers, we, you should have them in your saltwater tank. Anywhere fresh, where you have a lot of fish. Anywhere we have a lot of fish, freshwater, saltwater yeah. ponds, they're a wonderful tool. Water, it's a simple tool to use. Water just simply goes yep. across and a they light. Last. And they yeah, the bulbs change the bulb yearly after a year of yep. running time and they just keep circulating. Okay. But wonderful, wonderful tool. Yep. Um, what else you got? Other stuff we have. We got some other one really nice fish for the pond. You can see. Now what, back what here. is this? Oh. Th this, let's go to this right here. Let me hold on. This is, we had the spring and summer, or the spring and fall food. This here is the new summer staple food. This has, all, in the summer, their blood temperature is up high, so their, their metabolism, metabolism is moving. So they have a lot of weight that they need to keep maintained. Yep. This is the heavy duty high protein food that actually keeps them sustained. So this is the stuff that all the pros use. This is the stuff that all the pros, this is a really good high this, quality. This is what Eddie used. Yeah, this right. is the Hikari food. This is a right. good high end food, yep. a lot of protein, all a lot of these foods all natural, so yep. you're getting a lot of fish meal, a lot of algae yes, meal so in I'm there. so I'm just curious. So they, they do quite well, so you're getting a lot of shrimp in there. Wheat flour, fish meal is second. Fish meal is, a, yep, that's the big thing you're looking yep. for. Fish meal, fish live in the water, that's what they're going to be eating right here. This is a nice treat I right here. I didn't know that. Yep. You don't see, you see a lot of them like wheat germ and brown rice and stuff like that. Fish don't really eat that. They live in rice patties. Uh, this is a treat food, silkworm select. Oh, a treat. whole crush silkworm mm -hmm. pupai. Pupai, yes. Delicious, doesn't it sound so good? So this is, this is really a treat. That's right. a treat food, yes. That's if you want to sit by the pond and have them come up, almost like a, giving a dog a milk bone. Yep. You can give a fish a... A pupai. Yeah, a pupai, a pupai. There you go, and they can come right up and take it right out of your hand. So this is mostly protein. It is protein, just fattens them up. Yeah. Um, like I said, so in the summer you're getting the, yep. in the spring you're speed, you're building up their metabolism. So, uh, now, folks, yeah, all today. our stores don't have these giant fish, but they all have koi. Yes, they all have yes. koi these, and goldfish. And goldfish. All the stores have goldfish and small koi, but Hadley, Northampton, Springfield, and Agawam have big guys. Have big, and we are uh, going to be eventually putting us one into Ludlow as well. Yep. a little bit small, but we do have the big. Do fish they all as have well. ducks? They all have ducks. Everyone has the duck. You can't forget the duck. No. No, no. So let's say someone's starting the pond. Mm -hmm. They come here and because if they don't want to spend a hundred or two, whatever. Right. We'll you start. Just buy. Yep. You can buy a smaller comet you, right you here. You actually could buy these. Yeah. These are right. This is an interesting fish right here. This is a, this is called a fathead rosy. And it's a funny name, but they only get about four inches long. But this is perfect for those of you who have a, like a fountain pond or like a, like a little sta a stationary is a pond. Is it kind of goldfish? It's actually in the family. It's a type of minnow. And these are wonderful for taking care of the mosquito larva. They're champs at eating. Seriously? Yes. They're a champ at eating mosquito larva. If you have like a small, like stagnant um, yeah, yeah, yeah. porch pond, you get a lot of mosquito or bug larva. These guys will happily take care of that. Also in a big pond, these guys form really, really when you get them three to four inches long, yeah. they form really, really, really tight schools. So if yeah. you put a school of 15 or 20 of them in there, Swim them amongst the bigger fish. It yeah. gives you a really cool. And the big fish don't fish. eat them. 
Um, if it's a huge fish, they might, but I mean, right. in a big enough pond, usually in their pretty hand, they're going to become used to eating that food. They usually won't. They're usually pretty much okay. non And non here's yours, so if you want to start out with decent size, decent size, not yep. spend a lot of money. Right. These are your canary comet goldfish. You can see they have that beautiful yellow color. Yep. This is Do a they sing? They can sing beautifully underwater. They'll uh, give you yeah. the whale song there. Okay. Uh, this is a shabunkin right here. See that neat color pattern? It's yes. got the blue, red. These are goldfish. Pattern. These are all goldfish right here. No whiskers. No whiskers. Moving right along, we have our little koi. Now these, you can see whiskers. See Where? a little? Uh, yeah, no. they have, yeah, you can look closely. They have whiskers. Oh, they're starting. Yeah, baby they're whiskers. starting. These are babies. Now these are little. These are only eight dollars each. But within two years, you can have a sixteen inch. A lot of customers buy them little yeah. and just simply grow them out, and yep. they can get some big, big, big fish. We have a lot of customers that are. Come in with pictures of their babies that they've grown up, grown up. So you've got a really neat, neat way to start right here. Now it, your pond, if let's say you're just getting into this and you're digging your new pond for the first time, it's got to be at least three feet, right? Has to be at least three feet. Yes. The reason why it's a frost line. Um, deeper water takes longer to really freeze through. Um, if you're shallow up in New England, a foot and a half is pretty much going to freeze solid, even if you do have a, a heater in there. Yep. So I would dig it down at least three feet. Try and get it down at least three feet. That way you can keep yep. them out year round and okay. have your heater out. Okay. And, these, and how about these guys? These are cute little fish. These are good in ponds. They don't get quite as big. These are more suited for aquarium goldfish. However, they can live in ponds as long as you have a lot of shelter, a lot of floating plants. Because see the shapes of their body? Yeah. They're slower swimmers, so they'd be a little bit easier pickings for the birds. But oh. as long as you're sheltered, as long as you're sheltered, they will survive I fine. I forgot about pond. the birds. Yes, yes, yes. Which How about raccoons? Raccoons, yeah, anything. They're slower, so they're pretty much easy pickings. A lot of people lose their fish. The biggest offender is the herons that fly over. Yeah. Yep. Sometimes you get a neighborhood cat or a really ambitious raccoon. They're more interested in digging around, looking for the yep. plants and tear stuff up. Uh, but the birds are going to be your big offenders. In, so in the pond coming up, we'll have the lilies that'll float and that'll yep. keep them. And now, then these. This classic, is the best buy in the whole world. Best buy in the whole world. These are the quintessential classic. Comet goldfish, good old comet goldfish. 99 cents, you get them four for 2.99. Um, these will get up to 16 inches. Great way to start they a pond. They stay this color or they start changing color? They will stay. They what you bigger. see is what you get on this. Yep. You're going to get mostly orange, but yep. remember we had that big orange? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, that's what you're going to get. And some of them grow quite big. This is, now this is the difference. A lot of people think of the comet goldfish as the feeder fish. These are a little more expensive, 99 cents, but they're much, much, much better oh, yeah. quality. These, somebody actually took the time to grow these guys out, to hand feed them, to keep them um, healthy. Yep. So a lot of more effort went into these guys where the feeders tend to be cull outs. A lot of people will buy 100 feeders and drop them into their pond. Yeah. That's really a bad thing to do for your pond because a lot of those are going to die off. They're going to jam into your filter. They're going to load, pair, you know. Go, if you're going to go, go quality rather than quantity. Right. Um, put eight to 10 of these guys in rather than 100 feeders. So is it like a, um if you're just starting out, is it like an aquarium where you got to go through a cycle? Right, or? exactly. You do. They still develop. It's a little bit yeah. quicker in a pond because you've got a lot more volume to work with. Right. Uh, but like I said, I wouldn't go out and drop three $300 koi into a 150-gallon pond. Right. Um, all depends on the size of your pond. So I also perfect. noticed, Matt, that you have a lot of fish in here mm -hmm. with just this. Well, there's two filters on this. A lot of yeah. people question that. This is actually on Part all of, of our, our systems. We have a 40 gallon more, 40 gallons more of water running through a large wet and dry filter yeah. down here. We also have an ultraviolet sterilizer running on the back. Um, oh. And also these pipes right here, we yeah. do water changes. We can drain one third water changes every two days on these right here. Got and it. we can do that in 10 minutes. So we're, what you're looking at here is actually a 300 gallon aquarium with 2,500 gallons of water movement per hour. So okay. we're, it's a holding and, system. And the we're last holding. one is these guys. For and these it. are your slightly bigger koi. See, there's a little bit bigger, a little bit fancier, a uh, little more grown out. Yep. But you can see some of the koi in here. You can Beautiful really see the whiskers. Colors. Yeah, look at the colors on here. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. They're starting to reach puberty. I can yep. see that. You can see that. Yes, they shaving. have. Yep, they have much maturity. But you can see the colors are really coming out, the fins. Um, these are like people that want to get a little bit more head. But again, nicer way to start. It is a $20 fish. But again, it'll grow out to a beautiful two 20, foot or 20, yeah, yeah, you have two 20 inches fish. within two years. Right. And you can have a big prize. What an investment. Fish. In two years, yes. your six dollars can become up to like up. $200. You got it. So right. a lot of neat fish to get started in the pond. Um, 
again, just so we have slope. some other investment property we'd like to talk yes. about. We have some we we have some property in New Jersey mm -hmm. that we'd like to talk. Yes, Matt and I have one partners on. Yeah, mm -hmm. so don't go away, folks. We'll be back uh, in just a moment. So folks, before we get into what we're talking about, whenever we get some creepy crawly something, look at Matt's face. You, you notice that he's, he's like, uh, like a little kid that, you know, on Christmas morning o opening up packets. Mm -hmm. So I, I will start out with, what have we here, young Matthew? All right, it is a big froggy. This is a White's tree frog, Australian White's tree frog. Isn't White's? it cute? White's tree frog. I guess so. Named hold, after can the, we hold him still? Yeah, but just make sure you keep the hand. So why he is he going to? Uh, he's going to end up on your in your head if he doesn't. But look at him! <laughs> Isn't this guy awesome? A White's tree frog, one of the coolest, most interesting frogs you can have because it doesn't look real. It almost looks like it's made out of plastic. It do, you know what it looks like? like? It looks like silly putty. Like silly putty, right. That's what we were saying when we were pulling it out. It's, oh, here's his mate talking over there. Hear that croaking? Can you, you can hear that croaking? That is actually him making noise, or that one. It's the actual, his mate oh, in there. I'm going to turn it slow. Back you can see mate. him? But you can see, look at his feet, how he has those sticky, sticky toe pads there. He's great at climbing, and if he actually lands on your hand it feels like a like one of those wacky wall walkers or like yeah, a yeah, like yeah. a sticky suction cup so they've got little and suction he's cup australian feet. australian white's tree frog yes so very 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 cool little animal loves to eat crickets and this is a fun easy drink, to does keep. he drink fosters he loves his fosters he just swigs it down and he can croak out the alphabet beautifully but this guy here loves to eat crickets um, it's a great pet or an interesting look at pet. Have we ever had one before? Oh, we've had, yeah, we have these all the times. All the stores have these. They're actually quite common. And he's a hardy frog too. Uh, tall cage like you see up there with a lot of plants and hiding places. Yeah. A big, big bowl or water oasis that he can go into. Yeah. Um, you're going to be doing some eco earth for bedding and make sure he's sprayed down regularly. He likes it humid and wet. So you do want to actually keep the tank sprayed down. Um, so there's plenty of moisture. Um, Should you put one of those moisturizing? Remember we used to, do we still have those? Yes, you can, but a good, like I said, as long as you spray them fairly spray heavily a couple times yeah. a day, he should be fine. Yep. He should be fine. They love to eat mainly crickets. They're a bug eater. Um, occasionally they might grab a wax worm, but for the most part, they're a strictly whoa. a bug eater. Whoa, whoa, whoa. They are, you know, you can keep them together. I just wouldn't put him with yeah, itty bitty guess, little frogs. Uh, he might eat another little frog, but for the frogs of his own size, he's pretty. Yeah, his mate was calling. His for, mate was calling back for him. Get it? It's a mate. You it's know why? Mate. Why? Because they're Australian. That's mate. Yes, mate. <laughs> right. That's Got why. Him, yep. But he is like I said. He does make noise. So if you hear that croaking sound, a lot of times you might hear him. Does he get much bigger? He'll get a little bit bigger. He'll get a little bit bigger, about an inch or two more. Yeah. Um, these How long do they live? They can go about six to seven years. That we've really? Had, yep, we've had them. I had one of these as a pet years ago, and he lasted about seven years. So they go, they go quite a while. They are hardy. The only thing is, though, you're not really going to be handling them that much because the oils in your skin sometimes can, just, can irritate them. Um, so, it, like I said, it's more of a look at pet and an yep. observation pet. So th this is all kidding aside. This is the perfect tank for him. Perfect though. tank for him, and it's an inexpensive. Like I said, you can get this tank for eighty eighty dollars. Yeah. A nice little setup with the heat lamp. For that, you know, $120, $130 setup, and you can do a couple of them together. Yeah. Um, there's also interesting. I gotta ask, can mm -hmm. you tell if they're boys or girls? If you can tell with about, sometimes if you look on, I'd have to look how to do it on these. If you look on the eardrum on the side, usually the males have the bigger one. Really? Females have the one the eardrum? same. See the little circle right there? If it's a real big eardrum, it's a it's a boy. If it's a small eardrum, it's a girl. And so these are bred where? These are actually this particular one was bred out in California. Oh. Yep, these are all captive bred. They don't pull these, these yeah, yeah, are not yeah. pulled out, so yep. this is actually captive raised. Yep. Um, Boy, if he got out of your he out can of the jump. Cage. They can jump, yes. So make sure the cage is 
thoroughly covered because he'll jump out. He won't be able to find water, and eventually he'll dry up. And so oh, he'll yeah. find a dried up little shriveled frog. Because he's looking to. He uh, wants to jump, and they can jump. They do have a very good jump. Uh, they can go about eight to ten feet easily. So, a little bit of a spring right there. But he is very neat looking. You can keep on a great tank for these. Uh, one of those river tanks where you have water to one side, plants, oh, yeah, and yeah, 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 yeah. little fish and stuff on the other side. Um, cleaning them, spot clean their cage, because they're a frog, so they do make big plumpy messes. So yep. just as long as you can see them, so spot clean how, it as so you go. So how do you clean the cage if you take the cover off? They're going to... No, have another cage to scoop them in and, and cover them. And Should you wear gloves when you handle them? I always wear, yeah. It's a good idea to wear gloves with wet hands and try and handle them as minimally as possible. Um, sometimes if you have a, like a river tank, you really don't have to, you'd clean it like an aquarium. Spot clean. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah spot clean and just work what it in What kind of substrate do you use? You would use an eco earth for him, like a, almost like a moss type thing, because it does take, they do like it kind of damp, so that'll hold the moisture quite well. Yeah. Um, again, crickets, they eat a lot of bugs. Um, just crick, that's it, just pretty crickets. Pretty much, yeah, crickets. You don't crickets. have to put any calcium on them or anything Usually like that. not. Like I said, as long as he's well fed and he's fattened up, you really yeah. don't need it. And they should be fat. They should be nice and fat and chunky. They do like a daylight um, so They should look like lamp. Matt, not me. You don't, you don't yeah. want them spelt. Yeah, because I croaked my way through that last segment there, so exactly. we're good. Exactly. Exactly. But a heat lamp, they do like it warm, about 80 degrees, 85 yeah. degrees. Because that's because so nice they're from Australia. Yeah, they like are it they warm. Are they more active at night? They are, yes. You hear them at night more. So you will hear, like I said, it, some people might be kind of just annoyed if you keep in a bedroom with the croaking at night. So maybe in another room where you don't hear them. But they're not going to be cro constantly croaking, but just like what you heard right there. But for the most part, they're fairly quiet. And how much are they? These guys are $33.99. That's it? That's it. $33 for an interesting pet. Great for a classroom, um, for like a science yeah. classroom, for a classroom yeah, pet. Yeah, they're so or, cool. But it's something, just something unusual, something different. You got to see these in person, folks. But if you have kids, bring bring the kids yeah, in. They're, they are weird looking. They are weird looking and just something very different, really, easy to they keep. Look like, oh, they look like silly putty. Silly putty combined with an alien, yeah. for the most part. But it's an easy pet to keep. Um, not look at that side of maintenance. Them. Yeah, you can see his underside right there. See all the suction cup feet. So it's pretty, pretty neat. Almost like the ET, the ET fingers there. Well, much as much as I'm really uh, enthralled mm -hmm. with this, this uh, segment, it's uh, uh, it's time for us to wrap up. All right. Wait a minute, though. I want to watch how Matt puts this before we wrap this up. Go ahead and put him, put him back. Put your hand. On, don't, I don't. I'm jumping out, <laughs> Matthew. All right. Ready? Yes. On the count of three. One, two, oh. there he goes. That wasn't exciting. That wasn't exciting. Well, he hit the back of the tank, but there we go. Right, he's back home. He's back with his mate. He's back with his mate. They're happy. I think they're, uh, I think they're chugging one down right now, a little there Fosters. There he goes, little yeah. Fosters, and he's having shrimp on the Barbie. There you All go. right, folks, we'll be back in just a moment. Well, hello, everybody, and we are back here with um, Esther, who, who has been coming here for how many years, really, since we moved many, into this many. building? Well, how long have you been here? We've been here for almost nine years. Well, I've probably been coming for eight. Eight years, <laughs> right. So she comes with her giant dog. My really big, really, fierce really dog. Really big, fierce dog, and, and does uh, training for, what kind of training Competition do you do? obedience, AKC competition obedience. And you come from a long ways. I this do. I do. I come from Hopkinton, Mass. It yeah. takes me about an hour and 20 minutes to yeah. get here. But yeah. it's a really nice facility to train in, lots of distractions, lots of different things going on. So it's more like being in a show environment than in a place that's really quiet and right. sterile. So. so tell us about the star. So this is Elphaba. She's named from Wicked, the musical Wicked. Yeah. Elphaba is the first name of the Wicked Witch of the West. Okay. And you get what you name them, so yes. she's a little bit of a witch, but in a good way. Yes. She's a of skipper course. key. Yep, she's skipper gorgeous. Skipper key. S C H I P P E R K E. Yep. They're in the non sporting group in AKC. And she so is. So, what does that mean? They like to read, really, instead so when, of doing sports? So, when they started registering breeds, you were either a sporting breed, a working breed, or a non sporting oh. breed. There were only the two groups. Oh. And it's only as years went sweet. by that they came up with the terrier group yeah. and the hound group and the toy group. Do you like a scritchy but scratch? But these guys are still considered in the non-sporting group. The Dalmatians in that group, the Case Hunts in that group. Um, yeah, she does love that. She's she eight years that. old. Yeah. 
I also do very competitive canine nose work with her, which I describe to people as being search and rescue for civilians. No drugs, no bombs, no dead bodies. But we teach them to search oh, for Oh, then what fun is that? I know, I know. She would like, right? what fun she is would that? like some of that. Right. Um, but she's very accomplished. She has uh, the highest title that you can earn in that sport. So how do you train for that? So you start hiding food for them so they understand to search yeah. for something. And then you pair the search with essential oils that are on a little Q-tip. And you hide those. And they learn to recognize the smell come here. of them. Alphaba, come here. Come Does she have a nickname? Alphaba. That's it. <laughs> Got it. Everybody wants to call her Elfie, yeah. but it's not right. Elfie, it's, it's not Alphaba. Yes. No. Right? It's not like, fitting. my name's Alfie Esther. Is, right. Yeah, don't shorten that. Right. <laughs> right. Um, but it's a hugely rapidly growing sport in yep. the United States, and yep. she's been competing in that. She's eight years old, so she's been competing in that for seven years, and she's up with the top dogs. So, so how, I mean, forget what she has to go through. It's a huge commitment on your part. It's well, a ton of work. No? Any kind of training that you're going to do that you hope to compete yeah. with requires a pretty big commitment. Right? So you can't would you say ballpark figure how many hours it would for everything I do with yeah. all my dogs, I probably train three or four hours a and week total. That's it? That's it. Mm, most dogs don't do well if you drill them at yeah. things. What? And what? they like variety. Yeah. So I go from one thing to another thing to another thing. How many dogs do you have? Thing. I have four. And, and what flavors are they? I have three of these. Oh, you do? I do. I have a very old one who's still competing in nose work. He's 13 and a half. Yeah. And she's, I have her, and then I have a two year old Skipper Key. Yeah. And then I have a new golden retriever puppy. Oh, his name is Taxi. Oh, oh, so and this is this is like learning. my shepherd. Well, yeah. So people want right. to know: Does this breed shed a lot? The answer is yes, yes, but it's seasonal. It's not like a German shepherd that tends to shed nonstop all, all this, year she's round. She's just going to blow her coat. Right, she's getting ready. That's why right. she looks quite so puffy. Yep. She's getting ready to blow her coat. <laughs> but when she's done, and that's why that's I it. wear jeans, not khakis. Right. When she's <laughs> when done, she's, she's done, done. It's done. Kay. So you know what? We're gonna. This is this is really good. So we're gonna wrap this up, and I think I'd like to do a. Uh, you know, don't. So folks, we're gonna come back for next week's show. So I don't want you to leave your couch. Just sit there all week. All week. That's all a really week. good and, idea. And then come back. With your so dog. With your dog, right <laughs> by your half down, lying down <laughs> dog. So th everybody have a great week. We'll see you next week. Bye. Thank and you. And Esther and, and I, and I can't even pronounce Alphaba. the dog's name, Alphaba, are going to be back here next week. If your dog has a food allergy, you should try California Natural Dry Food. It has the fewest ingredients and it is the most limited ingredient diet you can buy. California Natural at Dave. One,
Um, so it's, uh, same with me. Yeah, there you go. Once I'm done, Once it's you're done, on, it's, it's not, not coming back. It's not coming no, back. No, I don't care what you put on it. Right. So tell me about the breed. Is this a good, we have time? Yeah. yeah. Is this a good family breed or? So they can be a little bit of a challenge. And for people who have no real prior dog experience, I tend to not recommend them. Okay. It's a lovely breed. I love them. I have, yeah. I've had them for 40 years. I mean, this dog is never, doesn't know me. And <laughs> That's right. Right. But she hears something. So they are guard dogs. They were bred to be ratters and watchdogs on the barges that ran on the canals in Belgium. That's their heritage. Oh. So they're little watchdogs. Yep. But they think they're really big. Yep. One of the problems is when they're puppies, they're this big. They're very fuzzy. Yeah. They look really, really cute. And yeah. people don't take the need for socialization and early training seriously enough. Because they think it's only going to yeah, be, right. she weighs 14 laptop. pounds. Right. What difference does it make? But right. it makes a big difference to every breed. Yeah. But especially the ones that have any kind of guarding or herding instinct in them, you want to get them exposed to as many things as you can, as early as you can, get them into a proper kind of puppy class. Yeah. Um, so that they are well-mannered, and socialized. well-behaved, socialized dogs. So that coming into a place like this doesn't freak them out, right? right? Meeting a new person. Right. My husband has no facial hair, but some dogs might be scared of the right. fact that you have a mustache. A mustache. Right. It shouldn't bother them. So puppies of any breed need to meet tall men, short men, yep. wide people, skinny people, all ethnic backgrounds, yep. the more that you can expose them to, the better. Yep. And then every kind of safe environment that you can Sort of like a kid, isn't it? It is like a kid. <laughs> and you I don't mean, really? want to force the issue, right? If, you're, if your toddler is hiding yeah. behind your legs, yeah. he's telling you that the situation is too much for him, right? Right. And the wrong thing to do is say, go meet them. Go. Right. Well, it's the same with the dog. If they say, you know, I'm feeling a little overwhelmed right now. I need to get away. Believe them. They're not lying to you. They're not being bad. Right. Right, they don't know to do that. They don't know any better, but so um, I, I so I've never had to discuss this kind of stuff with you. Do you, in your years, have you done dog training as well? I am an instructor. Yeah. I teach ten competition obedience classes a week at Masterpiece Dog Training in Franklin. Mass. Oh, what a great name! Masterpiece, and it's P E A C A C E yeah. P E A C. -E. Yeah. So Masterpiece. Yep. Um, so I teach. 10 competition I'll bet. classes You're a week a great there. Teacher. And I do private lessons there yep. as well, probably yep. a dozen a week. Yep. So I'm really, really busy. Yep. The idea of those classes is to help the owner understand how to teach certain things to the dog and then yep. take them home and teach them that. Yep. You can't expect a dog to really learn in a very stimulating right. environment. Right. But we practice and yep. I send them home with homework. Yep. And the ones that do the best are the ones who practice the most. Of course, of course, <laughs> right. It's funny, since I'm an instructor and I'm at that building all the time, I probably has le have less time to train than people who just come in from outside. <laughs> right, of right? course, that's shoemaker, always, shoemaker, yeah, yeah, shoemaker kids. Kids. Right, exactly. absolutely. But I am training her right now to compete at the medium level of AKC obedience. It's called open. So there's novice, open, and utility. Yep. are the three main levels. Yep. So she has to heal with me yep. off leash. Yep. She has to do a drop on recall, which is where I leave her at one end of the ring. I go to the other. I call her, and when she's halfway, I tell her to lay down. She has to stop right away and lay yep. down, and then What's come the, the rest of the... Oh, rest we got of the, 